that is found on a Singer 111 and the 211s. It's also found on several of the clones that are out there, as well as many of the other manufacturers, Conso, Faf, a lot of the older machines uh, use this technology, which is really, really basic. Uh, but it can save your machine from some serious damage, um, especially when sewing heavier materials and you hit uh, what I like to call bricks. Um, anyway, this is as the, it sits in the machine. It's on the lower side. This is your um, your gear for your timing belt. Your timing belt goes in here. Uh, you, so normally when you tip the machine back you would not see this exposed. This would be covered by a timing belt. You can actually do the adjustment I'm showing you with the timing belt on. However, it's a lot easier to do with the timing belt off, assuming you know how to get your machine back in time. Um, anyway, uh, I'm going to go over a few of the parts. Here is the, the end view. And this is not the shaft out of a Singer machine. This is just a shaft of the same size with a flat spot on it. Uh, it was just more convenient to do it this way. Uh, you got the set screw that goes on the flat of the shaft here. You've got another set screw. Um, you've got a series of metal uh, curved pieces. You've got uh, a hub that surrounds the shaft. And then you've got this is your safety mechanism right here. Uh, when you hit something um, firm. Uh, originally um, these machines were designed to sew quite a bit of thickness uh, especially the ones with the walking foot and it was common to hit something and instead of the machines without these you would tear up your um, you could strip your gears on your hook you could you could break your hook you could um, you could do a lot of damage, you can twist a shaft, you can do a, a number of things. Um, this has prevented a lot of damage over the years and saved a lot of, saved a lot of money. How, it is, however, important that it's adjusted correctly, so not only does it function, but you also don't want it kicking out every time you go up over a, a seam. So I'm going to show you how to adjust this. And the first thing I'm going to do is... Uh, show you uh, the individual pieces this I've got this a little bit loose take that loose take that loose okay so this is how it sits on the machine I'm gonna leave it on the shaft so it's easier to get in there um, this is the groove right here that corresponds with the device that moves back and forth when you hit a thick spot. Uh, the play in these, you can see right here, I'll get the angle for the light, the shine right here. That is the wear and tear of that hitting on both sides. So if you never adjust this, and then remember this machine was built in the early 60s, if you never adjust this, uh, you're going to have play between your top and your bottom shafts which throws off um, your hook timing and um, it's it's one of the basic things that you need to do on the machines that have this in order to tighten the machine up uh, and it's easy to do um, so I'm gonna put this back in here hopefully okay so, when your machine um, hits a thick spot, now normally this your belt would drive and it turns this direction if you're looking at it from this, you know, if you're sitting at where you sew, and you turn it this way uh, with the hand wheel towards you to operate the machine, um, this is what actually drives the lower shaft is this little uh, tab right here in this little tapered V. Um, when you hit something thick, the spring pressure on this actually 
pops out. Okay, that simulates hitting something what I like to call bricks. So at that point, the lower shaft is stopped. Your pulley continues to drive, but it's not driving the lower shaft. So you've isolated uh, your upper shaft from your lower shaft. Therefore, you're preventing, if the bottom shaft is jammed for some reason, you have prevented damage to your uh, hook components, your gears, and stuff that costs a lot of money. Uh, so now you'll notice on this particular and most of the ones that I have and I've used in the past, this is the lever here that re-engages this after you've hit a thick spot right here. Normally, and your machine may have this, there's a spring that holds this in tight. And all you have to do in order to re-engage your machine is to um, clear the jam out of wherever it may be. And then you turn your hand wheel over backwards um, this direction a spring would hold that in that notch you continue to rotate and it re-engages this and you're ready to go again now in the factory I take these off because if if an operator jams her machine and she knows that she can turn it over backwards and re-engage it she may not have the problem solved and she can make matters worse if she continues to sew and it keeps popping out um, so I disconnect this so it requires her to call a mechanic over to uh, actually what I do is and the way these work is I take a screwdriver and I actually hold it there rotate the machine backwards and then I pop it back in and then I take care of whatever caused it to to pop out in the first place so to get the slack out of this thing uh, it's fairly simple and right now you'll see if you look at this let's see how close I can get there's a lot of there's a lot of play in that okay that's going to transmit down to your hook and you can tighten up the gears you can do all this stuff and you're still going to have this play right here unless you adjust this now I know uh, some comments I've heard and I've read it myself in the singer manuals is that uh, it's factory set well I'm sorry but if that is been rocking since the 60s you're going to get some wear in there and it's going to be tightened up and um, this is the adjustment screw right here you can see uh, the path um, this is the screw that actually adjusts the play out of that and I, the set screw for that is here and normally it would be covered by the belt and you wouldn't see it you can slide the belt off to about here and then get to it with a screwdriver um, I don't recommend lifting the belt up this way to get to it because you're going to stretch your belt or possibly tear it so you want to you want to slide the belt off this way just enough to expose that screw so you loosen that up take a screwdriver and you'll see as I adjust this this screw is on an eccentric and I'll just rotate it okay until it's snug It'll still pop out if the machine gets stuck, but it's snug. And then I'll come back over here and I'll tighten that down. Now, if I go back and check, okay, now I have no I have no in play in that at all. And when you can no longer get this play out of here, it's time to replace uh, this piece. They used to sell this piece and this piece separately. Uh, you can still find them in certain suppliers. Um, I have no idea why this particular uh, gear was out of a machine. It just happened to be in the parts store. So it was easy to show you guys. So that's really all there is to it. Um, now that's nice and tight on there and you don't have any play. Um, that's about it. 